this is our second firing this time up to 400 and degrees. It'll probably get up to 500. I've already had it up to sitting at about 300 degrees for three hours, so this is the second burning of it. Uh, I shouldn't say burning, I'm actually just doing an electrical element in here. I'll show you a picture of that. Getting it up nice and hot. Letting it heat up a few times before we ever go to fire. So as I went around and turned and turned each time, you can see how it started here. When I came back around, I ended up over here. So it, it it just turned out it just it it did a uh, as I was turning it was kind of climbing up the ladder a little bit so not a big deal I'll just have to cut this down to here and then grind it off and then grind off the top of it nice and level not that it has to be level might be an advantage to have a low side I don't know so I'm gonna go ahead and continue on this upper line and then I'll just use my hand saw to cut the rest of it there all right so I got it cut down. It wasn't quite even across the top, so I shaved off a little bit. I just shaved this big chunk right here off of it because it, as it went around, it got uneven. So, anyways, now I'm getting ready to put some bolts. Found some that weren't quite as thick as the ones I looked at earlier. It'd have been nice to be that thick, but they're not. But they're also not quite as long. I looked and I don't have room for a two inch bolt in there. So I'll run this. This will get me just enough. If I book, drill it all the way into there and put that just on the outside right there, that'll give me enough to where I have a quarter inch of play on both sides inside of it. So we'll try this. If this is still too long, I'll move it a little smaller. I kind of want you know enough to grab onto there, and that's, you know. And about a finger's length to grab onto. So, probably bend up some rebar to hook it with on both sides. So, now I'm going to drill these holes one inch down from the top. Drill those holes in there. Bolt those in there. I might even weld them in place just so they don't slide out ever. Uh, I don't know. May not. We'll see. Uh, that's what I've got so far. I left, I left one end a little higher than the other end. So I'm going to beat this down and put a little a little uh, lip on it right here for pouring, kind of like you see on a pitcher or something like that. I don't know if it's necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. Try and keep the aluminum coming out in one spot. I'll heat it up real hot and get a nice round, cold round bar. And just keep beating that down until it's like basically until the lip comes down to where it's level with this lower side. It's only about a little over a quarter inch here, so I don't have a lot of room to beat down, but it'll be something. I'll make a nice big round lip on it. So it's kind of got this uh, two-liter bottle-looking bottom to it, and it's eight inches uh, across, eight inches in diameter. So, and I think I made it uh, eight inches deep, nine inches deep. I don't remember. I could have went a little deeper, but I really didn't want to get too deep. That's a lot of aluminum. So it's nine inches deep, nine inches deep, oh, roughly. Well, I didn't want to get too deep. I mean, if I ever melt that much aluminum, that's a lot. So, I mean, my hand doesn't take up even part of it, you know. So, anyways, we're going to go ahead and drill the holes, put the handles on it, try to bend that out. In the meantime, we're still running some drying on this. Been letting it run now. It's almost up to uh, 475. I've had it running for, let's see, 5, 6, 7, 30, so about two and a half hours at this temperature. Uh, it was pretty dry already, but I just want to start carrying it up to the higher temperatures before I go to flame and give it a little longer time. Uh, I figure if it can do, you know, four hours at 500 degrees, then we can start moving it up into the 800 degrees slowly, and then nine, and of course, up into the thousands. I still got to work on the burner. I have a small burner. It's not my two inch. It's not going to fill my two inch hole, but I do have a one inch burner that I'm going to probably start out with. I don't know if it'll get this whole thing that hot. A pretty big area to heat up. 12 inches round inside there and 13 inches deep. 
so I don't think that it will be enough to heat that whole area up to the kind of temperatures that I need to melt aluminum. But we're going to keep going. Alright, there's my crucible that I just made. Inside the chamber here. I'm hoping that I have enough uh, outer area. I'd say I have about, not even three fingers, a little over two fingers maybe. On the outside of it. For the flame circle around. Which honestly is probably good because there won't be a lot of vacant space out here. There can be a lot of vacant space in there if I don't get a lot of aluminum boiling. Uh, if I don't get a lot of aluminum melting. I want it to boil. And I think my burner should be off to the side enough to where it'll keep the flame circle in it. But as you can see, my loops are like right on the edge there. I don't have but a quarter inch on each side. It, it, right on the edges. Cut it about nine inches deep. I felt like that was a plenty depth, plenty of depth for it. Not sure how the uh, bottom of these canisters is going to deal with the... Uh, I think it's got like that two liter bottom to it. How that'll work with aluminum melting in it. Hoping it won't make too much of a difference. And the flame's going to probably come out, so if you're looking at it from down in the hole, if I add that little bit of cement down there, that torch is going to come in right at the base. Either way, like that. So hopefully those gaps will allow the uh, heat to get inside here and keep this whole thing hot. And we don't have problems with it losing heat.